Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and help me in praising our God on this morning, this first Sunday in February that God has allowed us to see. Also, happy Black History Month. Amen. God is truly good. Uh, good morning to our online viewers, our Facebook Live viewers. Uh, today is our Scout Sunday. And so all of our scouts will be leading us in this worship experience of today. And first thing we're going to have is our call to worship by Christiana Spencer, who is Troop 53G. Then we'll have praise and worship songs by our choir. And then we will have our morning prayer by Ethan Hoff, Troop 53B. Let's give God the praise on this morning. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise and worship songs are, be, are listed, uh, will be viewed actually on the screens. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. 
Good morning, church family. Almighty God, creator of us all, thank you for this Scout Sunday. Grant today's youth the patience to wait and listen to your voice. Help us to seek the answers in the silence of prayer. Let your thoughts, God, travel to us and through us. God, how thankful we are that you have come into our lives through the Holy Spirit. You know, Lord, that we're not perfect, that we're not, we want to improve. Show us where we can. We pray today for God's children, all the children of the world. May they find peace and love in their families and schools and learn the love of Jesus Christ. We pray for young people who are seeking a cause which is worthy of their life's commitment and a leader who is deserving of their devotion. We know that our youth must deal with hosts of options. So we pray, Lord, that they may choose you. Bless the work of scouting in, the pla in this place and around the world. We pray you will be with our scouts as they continue to follow the scout oath and law and work toward being a good citizen in their communities. As we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, amen. Now we will have our announcements and welcoming of visitors by Kaylee Spencer from Troop 53G. And then we'll have our pastoral remarks announcements from our, our very own Pastor Reverend Dr. Ramin M. Jackson, Sr. And after that, we will have uh, our Scout 2021 year review by our by Scout Master Kalana Mack. Giving honor to God, Pastor Jackson, Pastor Curran, trustee board, members, and friends. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kaylee Spencer, and I am here to give you your morning announcements. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Join us on Wednesday at noon by dialing 712-432-8399. The passcode is 795209. Continue prayers for our beloved members who are ill and or recovering from surgery. Arabella Calivra. To be added to the sick and shut-in list, and for pastor to know who is sick and shut-in, please contact the church office. May God bless you richly for giving to St. Timothy and our associated ministries. We encourage you to continue giving through our website by clicking, to donate but clicking the donate button, or you can download and use the Zelle app by using our church's email address, which is S-T-T-I-M-O-T-H-Y at hotmail.com. Also, you can utilize the U.S. mail or the church's mail slot. Contributions of any amount are always welcome and very much appreciated. The tutoring staff is in great need of tutors for elementary students. Please see a member of the tutoring staff if you are interested. Back on track, get your kids up to date on shots for school and wellness checks, COVID vaccines and testing available. During Saturday, February 19th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Edgewater Health, 1100 West 6th Avenue, Gary, Indiana, 46402. Would all February birthday group members pre present please stand? If you are watching by social media, would you please indicate in the chat that you are a February group member? The February group would like to acknowledge that two, contrib two contribu contributions 
have been made by the group to the church as follows. $1,000 for mortgage elimination fund and 500 to the scholarship fund. Please enjoy the virtual coffee hour today after church as they celebrate the month of love with a take and go loving treat. The February birthday group president is Sister Deborah Hendricks Black, sending a virtual hug to each of you. God loves you and so do we. At St. Timothy, we are always very happy to have visitors. I have visitor cards for, not very sure where the card went. For Teresa Harper, if there are any other visitors, please stand and give us your name. Let us welcome our visitors. Good morning, my name is Teresa Harper. Now Pastor Jackson. Good morning, Saints. My name is Dave Hampton. I'm a guest of Alicia Kelly in Minneapolis. I just want to say good morning to everyone. My name is Ann Walker. I've been here for quite a while. I've been looking at it on the computer, and I just want to let St. Timothy know that I love you and my pastors. All right, we love you too, Sister Walker. Uh, when you stood up, I said, I know you're not a visitor. <laughs> We thank God that uh, you're here with us, as so many uh, are with us uh, in person. Um, I know folks are starting to feel comfortable uh, a little bit in coming back, and, and we just want to make sure that we're safe and we're masked up and we're social distancing and doing the best thing that we can do to keep ourselves safe, but we got to keep on living. Amen, somebody. I just want to make uh, just a, a few additional uh, announcements. Um, number one, I don't know if it was mentioned um, about the flowers on the altar. Was it mentioned? Okay, so the flowers uh, that are on the altar are in honor 
of, um, if there's a slide up there, uh, of Brother Miller and uh, Sister uh, Miller. And uh, as they celebrate 70 years um, of love, and so we want to thank her for uh, making a tribute uh, of her and her husband. Um, and the flowers and then North X is also decorated as well. And so let's just give God a hand of praise uh, for his life and certainly his legacy as that family continues to remember their loved one. I want to thank everyone who uh, participated in the um, home going services. Uh, we had uh, two this week, and um, we thank God certainly for um, the life um, and the uh, legacy and the love uh, that was certainly shared uh, amongst uh, the family and uh, their loved ones. So we keep the Holder family in our prayers, uh, and we certainly also uh, keep uh, Sister Mary Young's family uh, in our prayers. But thank you, St. Timothy, for uh, showing up and supporting. I always say that uh, the ministry of presence uh, speaks louder, really, than the words that we say. Uh, folks, not, folks like to see and feel the presence of people uh, that are supporting them. And you don't always have to say anything, but sometimes just showing up and being there says a lot. So thank you for your presence. We have the initial meeting of the nominating committee. That will be on tomorrow uh, at 6 p.m. in person here. Those that are not able to be in person uh, will have the Zoom um, meeting ID number. Uh, that will be emailed to all the presidents. So look for the email on tomorrow. You should receive it. Uh, no later than 1 o'clock. If you don't see it before 1 o'clock or by 1 o'clock, uh, then uh, just call the church. There's a possibility we don't have your email address. So all presidents of all ministries of our church, uh, if you will receive a reminder email of the meeting tomorrow at 6, and uh, also the Zoom information for those who want to Zoom in uh, on the meeting um, in regards to the nominating uh, committee. We've listed the names of those presidents in the bulletin a few Sundays ago, and that same list will be present um, on tomorrow. Each Sunday we'll be um, highlighting um, a black history moment and a black history and a person um, of, uh, that has contributed um, a lot in our history. And, um, and today we'll start off, the scouts have selected someone and they'll do their black history moment, but each Sunday uh, Pastor Curran will take that lead and making sure uh, we have a black history moment uh, coming from our youth and, and, and also um, our adults as well. And so stay tuned uh, for that each Sunday. You are welcome to wear any Afrocentric attire you desire. Um, I think I kicked it off today in Sunday school and Bible study, and I looked around and I said, I'm the only one that came from Africa this morning. But we encourage you in the spirit of Black History Month, if you desire to do that or wear colors of, of African descent, is fine as well. But particularly on the last Sunday, as we have traditionally have done, uh, we'll gather and have a special service as we celebrate our heritage. Uh, then certainly afterwards, we'll have uh, a meal uh, to go. Not to stay, but to what? Go. To go. And so we encourage you to, um, to bring uh, family and friends uh, to that as well. And uh, let me say one more thing, and then we'll move forward in our worship experience. But this is a bit of, um, of joyous news. I'm always excited when someone accepts Christ as their Lord and Savior, and also excited when someone rejoins uh, our church. And so I want to make mention, I've i uh, been calling and talking with um, Brother Robert and uh, Joanne Height, and they have uh, rejoined our church. And so let's put our hands together and welcome them back. <laughs> we'll now move forward in our worship experience, and uh, we'll have uh, now the, the scouts to come and give their... Um, their 2021 Scout Year Review, and they'll give the, also the Black History Moment, and then their Scout Oath and Law. Good morning, church family. Good morning. You see, I'm all smiles today, because today is Scout Sunday, and you know this is the day where I am bursting with pride. 
I love these children with all of my heart, and I wouldn't rather be anywhere else on this day. If I can have the PowerPoint, please. Thank you. So today we celebrate the Scouts in Cub Scout Pack 53. Those are our smaller babies. Troop 53B, those are the boys. Troop 53G, because yes, girls are now in Boy Scouts of America, and Venture Crew 53. Let's take a look back at year 2021. Year two of coronavirus and year two of our on again, off again meetings, activities, and events. Year 2021 started for us with this very event, Scout Sunday. On February 7th, 2021, we held our annual Scout Sunday with limitations on how many could attend. We had a very small celebration. However, also on February 7th, we held our first multiple Eagle Court of Honor for Eagle Scouts Jaden Johnson, Kendall Jackson, and Christian Gray. <laughs> Although we weren't quite back to meeting in person, the Scouts were able to still work independently on virtual merit badges in a variety of classes on the photo you'll see read uh, hall. Scouts are always willing to learn no matter what the environment. On March 4th, we finally held our first all-in-person meeting, and what a joy it was to see all of my babies face to face. In March, the Boy Scout organization recognized Kendall finally as the first African-American female Eagle Scout in the United States of America. It was at that time that her world completely changed. From magazines to newspapers, from the Kelly Clarkson show to Access Hollywood, from local representatives to the United States Capitol, the accolades kept coming. However, the most exciting news is probably something you did not know. Out of 1.2 million active scouts, Kendall was chosen as one of the five scouts to deliver the report to the nation. Section 8 of the Boy Scouts 1916 Congregation the Congressional Charter requires the BSA to present a report to Congress by April 1 of each year. Rather than faxing the report to the White House and Senate, the BSA selects youth delegates from across the country to hand deliver the report. Normally, selected scouts get to deliver the message to the United States President in the Oval Office. However, because it was 2021 and because of COVID, our scouts delivered the message via Zoom. And because of the insurrection at the Capitol, the president could not come. However, it was still quite an honor. And because of your support, St. Timothy, one of our own has been chosen and will ever go down in history for this honor. <laughs> On June 17th, three of our youth celebrated high school graduations. All three were very actively involved in scouting. Kendall and Sonnet and the troop, and those two, along with Dorian, were in the crew. We canceled our annual crew trip and summer camps during that summer because of the sore and COVID cases. And for the first time in a long time, we did not camp. On October 31st, we participated in the annual Hallelujah Night celebration, passing out candy to the community youth. On November 4th, we held meetings again and performed uniform inspections. A lot of the children had grown since the last time we had on uniforms. <laughs> on that same day, the Cub Scouts learned not tying, and they are on their way to become quite the Scouts. The baby. In November, the crew returned to shopping for the missionary group, buying hygiene products for senior citizens. For Thanksgiving, the college students came home, and we spent a day playing a rousing game of laser tag. And this is also the day we found out we had traitors. Pastor, I'm just saying. He switched teams on us, y'all. And on December 4th, we once again shot for the missionary group tidying product giveaway. We ended the year on December 18th. We had our final activity of the year helping to distribute Angel Tree party gifts. So what's next for our scouts? Outside of continuing to learn our flag etiquette, well, we do what we always do. We scout on. Even in this on again, off again, semi-virtual COVID-19 world, we continue to learn, we continue to serve, we continue to thrive, 
and we continue to be prepared for life. Thank you. My last two announcements are, as you are donating to the individual groups, please don't forget the youth groups. We really appreciate, of course, you giving to the scholarship. However, it takes a lot to camp with these children, to feed these children, to go on trips, to get the uniforms. And so we really appreciate any and all donations you can make to the scouts. Also, I would be nothing without the following people. And I'm gonna acknowledge those that are here today. Shanta Scott, she is our Cub Master. Rebecca McIntosh, who just did and flipped in the PowerPoint for me, and she made the beautiful mask we have on today. <laughs> Keishana Tatum, please stand. All, we've had all of her children in the Scouts. <laughs> Lonnie and Pete Hoff, my dynamic duo over there. And of course, we understand that life, we, we all get older, I'm getting older, but this young man has helped for many, many, many years, so I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Bill Johnson. And to all the men and women who have helped throughout the years at our home watching virtually, I know Wilson Pierce, Herbert Dunaway, and of course my beloved Uncle Roy, um, thank you so much. Those men have given years and years and years of service to Scouts. And so I know I'm forgetting somebody, please charge it to my head and not my heart but I thank each and every one of you for the time dedicated. And all of you that are sitting in the audience, there's always room for more leaders. Thank you. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. My name is Candace Holman and I will be bringing today's Black History Moment. Today we honor Tuskegee Airmen and Eagle Scout Charles McGee. Charles E. McGee, a distinguished Eagle Scout who broke racial barriers as a member of the all black flying unit known as the Tuskegee Airmen, died on January 16th. He was 102. McGee received the Congregational Gold Medal in 2007, was inducted into the National Aviation Hall of Fame in 2011, and presented and presided over the coin toss at the Super, at the Super Bowl in 2020. These honors and, and countless more throughout McGee's life represent the many ways the nation has tried to salute and thank McGee, whose military service lasted 30 years and spanned three wars, World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. McGee's 409 combat missions and 6,308 6, flying honors are among the most in the history of the U.S. military, and his bravery wasn't limited to time escorting bombers on raids across Europe. On land, McGee endured discrimination from white officers, threats from civilians, and countless closed doors. Throughout the years, the Boy Scouts of America have offered its own salute to the man who's all who says scouting helped him shape his life. The honors included the National Capital Area Council's Lifetime Achievement Award, with which the council presented to McGee in February 2020, alongside a special shoulder patch honoring his legacy. If more people lived their lives by the scout oath and scout law, McGee said at the event, the world would be a lot better off. McGee became an Eagle Scout on August 9, 1940 in Gary, Indiana according to the National Eagle Scout Association's official records. In 2020, the BSA presented McGee with, sil with the Silver Buffalo Award, scouting's highest honor for an adult volunteer. In remarks shared during the virtual ceremony, McGee said that America needs scouting more than ever. We can't give up mentoring the young folk on the direction that they ought to, do to go and things they ought to do, he said. He also encouraged scouts to, member, to remember the Cub Scout motto, do your best, whether they're eight or 80. That should be the goal in everything you do and always doing your best, McGee said. Anytime you do less than, best, than your best, you're letting yourself down.
during Scout Sunday, we know that there are only so many spots that the kids get an opportunity to speak, but I wanted you to see them all on this Sunday. And I wanted you to understand why we do what we do. The purpose of scouting is to encourage the physical, intellectual, social, emotional, and spiritual development of young people so that they take a constructive place in society as responsible citizens and as members of their local, national, and international communities. We teach them the very first thing is the scout oath and the scout law when they start attending meetings. And today, I wanted them to recite the scout oath and the scout law for you. Two, and we're gonna say it slow so everyone understands us loud and clear. On my honor, I would, louder. A scout is. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. Let's give another round of applause for our scouts again. They're doing such a wonderful and marvelous job. Again, thank you, Sister Kalana Mack, for leading and being a great example for them as well. At this moment, we're going to have our offertory statement and prayer by another one of our scouts, Camille Spencer. And then we're going to have uh, uh, the music ministry by our choir, and we'll have our preached word and message from our pastor, Reverend Dr. Ramin M. Jackson. Lord, we thank you for our faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
So we thank God for this Sunday. Uh, we thank God for our young people and, and leading us, our scouts leading us this morning uh, in worship. Let's give them another round of applause. Uh, and certainly to the leadership of uh, Sister Kalana Mack and all those that uh, support that team as well. Uh, they make a unit and they work well together. We watch them over the years and they certainly do um, provide a service for not only our community and church but also for um, the young people as well. And then we want to thank parents because you know, kids can't get here and, and, and do their scouting duties without the parents uh, being supportive of their children as well. So let's give the parents a round of applause. As we look into the Word of God this morning, since it was Scout Sunday, uh, I decided to uh, do a switch. Usually we, we look into the scriptural lesson for the week for the Bible study, uh, but usually on special Sundays, I kind of uh, move to another passage of scripture um, as the Lord sees fits as well uh, as it relates to whatever the special occasion is. And so since it is Scout Sunday, I'm going to look into the book of Joshua, uh, Joshua chapter 1, and I'm going to just read, start with a few verses in the beginning, and then I'm going to end with uh, verse number 9, which is the focus of the text and the sermon for this morning. While you're turning to Joshua uh, chapter 1, uh, which is in the Old Testament, right after Deuteronomy. Let me share um, this bit of a joke that was uh, actually uh, shared with me uh, a few weeks ago. And it was about this, um, this six-year-old uh, student that went to Sunday school, and every time he went to Sunday school, he would raise his hand and ask questions. And so they were studying the book of Noah, and particularly the story around Noah and the ark. And those of you familiar with Noah and the ark, where the Lord told Noah to build the ark because it was going to rain 40 days, 40 nights. And he told him to take two of each uh, animal and his, and his family and put it on and bring them on the ark. And then the Lord was going to close the doors of the ark and he's going to let it flood, he's going to flood the earth. Uh, with water. But the point of the story is that he, the Lord told Noah to put two of each kind on the boat. And so after the six-year-old um, heard the story and was taught the story in Sunday school, the question was raised, why didn't Noah ever go fishing? The teacher looked at the student and tried to explain to the student as best she could but her response was, he only had two worms. <laughs> I'm waiting for the rest of y'all to get it. <laughs> Joshua chapter 1. The Lord commands Joshua. Verse 1, he says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to Israelites. I will give you every place wherever you set your foot, as I promised Moses, the territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river of Euphrates, all the Hittite country, and to the great sea of the west. Look at verse number nine. It says, I, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God 
will be with you wherever you go. It's verse 9 where we want to pause and park as we look at the word this morning that Jesus, that rather the Lord says to Joshua to say to the people, says, I've commanded you, Joshua, be strong and courageous. I want to talk for a few moments on being a brave person. Being a brave person. Almighty God, we thank you for this moment in which we share together in your word. And Lord, we ask that you would touch right now my lips, my mouth, touch my voice, O oh Lord, and also my mind. Speak to us, O oh Lord, through the biblical text that it may touch thy people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On this Scout Sunday, also the second communion Sunday of the year, and on the first Sunday of Black History Month, as we celebrate our heritage. But in keeping with the Scout Sunday, I wanted to talk about being a brave person. According to the Scouts' law, which you've heard them state, recite before you, there are 12 principles of the Scouts, in which the Scouts live by. A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, clean, reverent, and brave. All these principles are not only principles for the scouts to follow or live by, but I would submit to us and suggest to us that these same principles, the believer, the Christian, should live by as well. For each of these principles are also biblically based. I want to talk about bravery, and bravery is defined as courageous or having courage, having courageous behavior or character demonstrated by an individual. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and I quote, the time is always right to do what is right. In essence, even when Dr. King's quote, that bravery means that sometimes you have to stand in a position in which you have to do what's right. In our text this morning, Joshua demonstrates bravery and what it means or what it looks like to do what's right. Joshua has been traveling with uh, Brother Moses for quite some time. He has been the officer, the chief officer, if you will, and he was responsible for uh, uh, the, being the commander and the chief and, and to be responsible for the, the army and the Lord's army and, and the fighting and, and the wars that were going on in those days. Joshua was under the leadership of Moses, but it became a time where Moses couldn't serve anymore. Moses couldn't do anymore. His, his life expectancy began to dwindle. His, 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 his life began to pause or it began to stop. It began to end. Even though God called Moses to deliver his people out of Egypt, which he did, but Moses was only going to go so far as their leader. He leads them through the Red Sea. But then after he gets through the Red Sea and goes through another wilderness experience, they have another river to cross. They have Jordan's River. But it wasn't Moses' responsibility nor his leadership to be able to lead the people of God, the Israelites, over the Jordan River. Therefore, Moses dies. Joshua begins to be uh, the one who is raised up, the Lord calls him, the Lord summons him to now take over the leadership and to bring the people to the other side of the Jordan. Well, what's on the other side of the Jordan is the promised land. It's the land that's flowing with milk and honey. It's the land in which the, uh, the, that was promised to the Israelites, that God promised Moses, even before Moses. God promised them that they would have this promised land that would be given unto them. 
inheritance would go from one generation to the next. But it wasn't Moses to give it to them or lead them there, but rather it was Joshua. Moses was considered of the, the older regime, but Joshua was the, was the young, uh, vibrant uh, one who was capable and skilled in fighting and, and, and leading God's people. It was not by accident that God called Joshua to the ranks and able to lead his people. We find that Joshua begins to uh, have these difficulties and challenges because he has to lead 12 tribes uh, over the Red, over the Jordan River to get to the promised land and the challenge was he had to get through the Jordan River. The Bible tells us in this passage of scripture that there was bravery in this text because in order for Joshua to complete his task, he may have been nervous, he may have been afraid, he may have been scared to be able to lead these people over this Jordan River, but God gives him a promise. In the beginning of the text, he promises him that, that, that he will have a cross over to the other side. But not only does he give him the promise of what uh, the promised land is to be given unto him and the Israelites, but also he encourages him by saying, Joshua, you have to be, as a leader, you have to be strong and you have to be courageous. In other words, you have to be brave. You have to be brave because there are going to be some enemies in the territory in which you're going to take over. I'm going to give unto you. They're not going to want to release their territory, but, but I'm giving you the authority. I'm giving you the power. I'm giving you the know-how, the skill set. I'm giving you the manpower to be able to take over the territory that's promised unto you. But not only that, he tells in him in this being strong and courageous is that when you are strong, Joshua, when you are courageous, Joshua, those who are following you will see the example of what courageous looks like, what courage looks like, what strong looks like, what power looks like, what it, what it looks like to be able to stand in the midst of adversity. Joshua becomes the example that leads the children of Israel. I would submit to us that being a brave person means one needs to be both strong, be courageous, and lastly, know that God is always present with you. Let me start with number one, bravery comes with being strong. It's right there in verse nine. He says, have I not commanded you? God gives a command, and his command is not something that he takes lightly, but he wants us to be obedient by his command. His command for Joshua, he says, is to be strong. Be strong is being able to withstand great force with pressure. Some people may think uh, being strong means you have to have power. But power is not being strong because I think about when we have electricity in our homes and, and when we have power, there's electricity that comes through the house and gives us power, gives us light so we can, we can experience the light, turning on the light switch and, and, and experiencing uh, plugging in something in the wall and it works. But when the power goes out, that means someone has shut down the power. I would submit to us there's a difference between power and being strong. See, being strong literally means that you're able to stand in, uh, in adversity. In other words, when trouble comes your way, when pressure comes your way, you're able to not fight back with power, but you're able to stand strong with strength. It takes strength to be able to stand and still in your adversities. It takes strength to be able to be able to stand in the midst of trial and tribulation. That's why the Bible declares that our weapons, are, our, our warfare are not carnal, but our weapons, our warfare have to do with the spiritual. We fight in the spiritual realm because this flesh, when we fight against this flesh, when we fight with flesh, flesh can get tired, flesh can get weak, flesh can give up. Flesh can cry, flesh can turn in the towel, but when you fight in the spirit, 
the spirit takes over the flesh, and that's how we're able to get through our circumstances and situations. Matter of fact, you're here today because you've, 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 you've allowed yourself to embrace the power of the Holy Spirit that is indwelled in you, and that's why you're able to wake up this morning. You may have some bills that are due, but you're able to smile and come to worship. You may have pain in your body, but you're able to make your way to worship and pray. Praise God, because there's something about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will, will empower us. The Holy Spirit will give us what we need, the strength we need to get through the times, the low times in our lives, the, 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 the wilderness experiences that we experience in life. It is the Spirit of God that gives us the strength that makes us strong. I don't know about you, but I thank God for every experience in my life because it's made me stronger than I ever have been. Oh, strong. Tells them be strong. And I will ask the question this morning is, is how much pressure have you been under lately? How much pressure that has been uh, pressed on you and pressed on your life? And you're trying to figure it how in the world I'm still making it? How in the world I'm still putting one foot in front of the other? How in the world I'm still able to put my clothes on and, and to put my brush my teeth in the morning and to get in my car? How in the world and I'm able to get on? the phone and talk to my family and friends? How in the world am I able to make my way to worship this morning and be able to praise God and thank God? It's because you are strong. If I have somebody in here this morning that can testify, I know what it means to be strong. When I lost some loved ones in my life, didn't know how I was going to make it. I feel lonely at times, but somehow God kept me strong. When I lost a child or I lost a mother or a father, God kept me strong when I lost a spouse or a cousin. God kept me strong. Are there any witnesses in here this morning that said I know something about strength? I, I've been put in a situation where I had to draw on the strength of the almighty God. I had to pull on the strength of a God that knows all about me. I had to pull on the strength of a God that knows that, that I can make it. Somehow I made it. Don't know how, don't know when, but God brought me through and I'm here to day to testify that's my testimony this morning that God has made me strong it wasn't had to do with a family member or a friend that made me strong but it had to do with the circumstance that God put in my life it had to do with the pressure that had been put on my life that caused me to come out looking like pure gold that sometimes we are put in the fire but there are times we come out the fire not looking like what we've been through is there anybody here that said last year I've been through some pressure in life? Last year I've been through some fire in life. Last year I've had some ups and downs. Last year I've had some issues. But this year I crossed over into another year in the second month of a new year. Still my hands are lifted. Still my voice is lifted. Still my mouth is opened. And I'm praising God each day for what the Lord has done for me. Is there anybody here this morning that said God has done some great things for me and I can't tell it all, but look at me. I'm the testimony this morning of what the Lord has done. If he done it for me, I know he'll do it for you. Oh, come on and put those hands together and somebody shout strong, strong. Strong, 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 strong. I, I made it thus far because he's given me the strength. I, I pressed my way thus far because he has made me where I am. Yeah. Says, strong. But then he says, becoming brave means not only being strong, but you have to be courageous. You have to have courage. Courage. Listen, courage is not the absence of fear. Courageous or being courage, having courage, or being courageous people, we do feel fear. Fear is reality. We have to face fear. But we are able as the people of God to manage and overcome our fears. 
Every day I wake up, I've got some fears. Particularly when I don't know the unknown can become fearful. But, but as the body of Christ, we ought to be able to manage and overcome fears to the point where the fear doesn't stop us from action. What do you mean, pastor? That even though fear may be present around me and lurking around me, some may fear losing the job. You don't know what's going to happen on that job. And that's your life support and supporting your family. Some may fear every time I go to that doctor, he's going to tell me something new. Oh, there's no cure for this. There's fear. Even in this pandemic, when it first started, I was preaching to pews. But I preached as if somebody was there. Fear caused folk to not come to church in person because of the virus. That's the reality. Fear sometimes puts us in a position, even when we're driving down the road, you can control yourself, but we can't control other cars and vehicles. Everywhere we look, fear is right there. But when we allow the fear to overtake our minds, then it stops us from living. And that's what Joshua is experiencing in the text, is that even though he's afraid of this fear of this Jordan River and, and the people that he's leading are complaining like they complained with Moses, but Joshua heard the word of God. He said, be strong, Joshua, and be courageous. In other words, don't worry about the river. But you look at what's on the other side of the river. Can I help us this morning? Some of us are too focused on the river of trouble, the river of sickness, the river of disease, the river of, 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 of chaos, the river of financial problems, the river of, of family issues. But I come to tell you, don't focus on the river, but focus on what's on the other side of the river which God has promised you. He's promised us a promised land. He's promised us a land of blessings. But you can't get to the blessing without going through the river. You can't get to the blessings of God without going through some trouble. And if you ever can get through the trouble, God will allow you to see the blessing. I come to tell you, look over your life. Every blessing that God has given unto you, think about what you had to go through to get the blessing. And, and, and oftentimes, it's worth going through the trouble when you know and have experienced the blessings of God. And that's why I thank God every time trouble comes in my life. Because all it's telling me is there's something coming. Oh, can I help and prophesy to someone here this morning? You experiencing trouble in your life is because God is up to something. God, God is about to do something great in your life. God, God's about to pour and open up the windows of heaven and pour out the many blessings upon your life. Ah, the higher and the greater the trouble, the higher and greater the blessing. And you ought to praise him in advance for what he's about to do. And sometimes we, gotta, we wait until God does something for us, then we bless him. But you got to learn how to bless him in the valley. You got to learn how to bless him in heartaches and pain. You got to learn how to bless him in 
tribulation. You've got to learn how to lift your hands when you feel like crying. You've got to learn how to open your mouth and say hallelujah anyhow. You've got to learn how to praise the almighty God like David did. David said, I'll bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. In other words, he said, I'll praise him in the good times and I'll praise him in the bad times. I'll praise him when I have no money and I'll praise him when I have a whole lot of money. I'll praise him when things are good and I'll praise him when things are bad. Lastly, bravery comes with knowing that the Lord is with you. It's in verse 9. He says, be strong and courageous. Here it is. Do not be terrified. Don't be scared. Do not be discouraged. Life can cause us at times to be discouraged. He says, don't be discouraged. Hear the word this morning. He says, the reason why you are not to be terrified and discouraged, here it is, there's not a period there. There's a comma. It means there's something coming after this. He says, don't be terrified and discouraged. Here it is, because for the Lord your God will be with you. Not that he might be with you, that he's going to think about it, but the Bible says he will. That's a declaration. That's a promise that God will be with us. Here it is. The text says, wherever. Oh, y'all can't get excited on that. <laughs> wherever you go. So wherever you are, God is. Okay, you didn't get that just yet. I, I, I know that's not too deep, but, but that'll help us, somebody, this morning. Where, wherever you are, God is. Come here, Pastor Curran. Where, 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 wherever you go, God is. He is God. I'm you. Wherever. God is. Some of y'all, you know, you have to get down on your knees and you start praying. And say, Lord, help me to hold out. Lord, bless my children. Lord, I need a breakthrough. Lord, I can't do this by myself. Lord, I'm under some pressure and some, some, some stuff that's holding me down. Lord, I need your help. And while you are praying, guess who's right by you? The Lord is with you wherever you go. And then some of y'all, when you get off your knees and you stop praying and then you start going to the grocery store, the Lord is with you wherever you go. And then some of y'all got some sicknesses and, and it take you a little time to get to where you need to get to. You got a little limp to you and, and, and heartache and pain is, is holding you down and you, and you try to press your way. But, but you got to know when you're pressing your way, somebody is, is holding you up. And the Lord is with you wherever you go. If you're in the valley, he's with you. If you're in the sick room, he's with you. If you're depressed, he's with you. When you're lonely, he's with you. But look what I'm doing, saints. You got to keep on walking. You got to keep on pressing. You got to keep on making your way. And as you keep moving, the Lord is with you. And even when you can't see him and can't see yourself, no, the Lord is with you. See, some of y'all can't see me right now, but you hear my voice. And when you can't see God, you better open your ears and hear his voice. Let him speak to you. 
Let them help you. Let them build you. Let them strengthen you. Let them heal you. Let them pick you up. Let them start you on a new day. The Lord is with you wherever you go. And it's going to get a point in your life where your steps are going to get slow. But because the Lord is with you, he'll speed up your steps. He'll help you to run on just a little while longer. He'll help you on Monday. He'll help you on Tuesday. He'll help you on Wednesday. And when you get down and out on Thursday, he'll pick you right back up and continue you on Friday and on Saturday. And then when you get on the spin, you're on despair on Saturday. When you feel like all hope is gone on Saturday and you fall again, he'll pick you right up on Sunday morning and you'll make your way to the house of prayer. And when you get to the house of prayer, you ought to stand on your feet and tell God, thank you for another day. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for making a way for me. Thank you for doing what you've done for me, Lord. Here it is. It takes a brave person to face your obstacles and your challenges. Here it is, with the Lord. Take the Lord with you. And I promise you, saints, when you take him with you, everything is going to be all right even when it doesn't look all right. You say, it's okay. It's gonna be all right. How do you know it's gonna be all right? Because the Lord is with me. So I can dry my tears from my eyes. I can stop having a pity party. I can stop complaining about it. Because it ain't gonna do nothing. It's still gonna be there, right? So you might as well just be brave and face your circumstance with the Lord. Come on, stand on your feet and let's give God praise this morning. That's how we become a brave person. Be strong, be courageous, and take the Lord with you. Lord, help me to hold out. Help me to hold out until my change is come. Come on, let's sing that together. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Come on, somebody needs to hear that this morning. Lord, help me to hold out. Oh, I'm telling you, Lord, help me until my change. Oh, I'm asking you, Lord, help me to hold out. That's my prayer this morning. Lord, Lord. Help me to hold out. Lord, I need you to help me. Help me. Hold out until, until my change. There may be someone here this morning that's heard the word of the Lord this morning and needs to accept Christ as Lord and Savior over your life. Would you come, my brother? Would you come, my sister? Accept the one who can heal you, deliver you, and set you free. He'll help you. But you gotta be brave enough to come to him. Would you come? Help me to hold out until Second call is I'm already saved, but don't have a church home, and I want this church to be my church. Would you come, my brother and sister? 
second call is, I'm already saved, but I want to come back to the church. I've been away for a while, I want to come back. Be rededicated to the house of God. Would you come? Help me to hold down. Lord, 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 help me, help me to hold down until, until my day comes. Help me to hold down. You may be seated. This time, we'll be sharing in the broken body and shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at this time of communion. If there are anyone, if there's anyone that is in need of hand sanitizer, please raise your hand and the usher will assist you in getting your hand sanitized. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on. me strength from day to day it will never 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 lose its power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley oh the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never, never, it will never, never, it will never, never lose its power. Let's thank God for his broken body and shed blood. It will never lose his power. Over 2,000 years ago, him dying for us. And this is, he says, as often as we do this in remembrance of him. And those, if there's anyone that's in the sanctuary that is in need of the elements of, of communion, please raise your hand and the usher or the altar gear will attend and assist you. Please raise them high so that they may see that you are in need of the elements.
Has everyone been served? As we await the general confession to be placed onto the monitor at this moment as we say it together, let us begin with the first slide with the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Has everyone been served? Let us pray over the elements. Our God and our Father, we thank you. We ask that you bless this bread and this juice that is a representation of your body and your blood sacrifice for the remission of sin. Lord, your word says, do this as often as we do please in remembrance of you to remember what you've done on Calvary for us, dying and getting back up on the third day and letting us be with you in the newness of life. So we thank you and we love you. In Jesus Christ's name that we do pray, amen. If we would hold the body. Allow us to commune in the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now as we lift up the cup, the cup sanctifies us, frees us from sin, because his blood was shed for us. Let us commune. And said after they had done supping, they had went with the master up to a mountain and sang songs of Zion. But if we can join in community together in, in saying the Lord's Prayer, which says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen
now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.